And welcome back. And in this lecture, what we're going to talk about is arithmetic operators. What do arithmetic operators allow us to do? They allow us to take our variables, which is our containers for values and information that we store in there, and allows us to take those that can have mathematical principles applied to them, for instance, like your int, your double, your float. It allows us to take those and then perform mathematical operations on them. So here's a list of our arithmetic operators, and you see that they're, they're very easy to lead grasp because they're, well, the same symbols that we use to represent these either online or if we've uh, represented these in calculators as well, they're the, same, uh, they're the same operators. So we have the addition, which is the plus, subtraction minus, and uh, which is a hyphen, and we see the multiplication is the asterisk, which is the number 8 key. Division is the forward-leaning slash, which is where the question mark is on the keyboard. And a newcomer to this here. Now, you've probably never seen this before, but what this is is it's called the modulus. And it uses a percent symbol. Whereas division stores how many times does one number go into another number, how many times it does, does it divide evenly, the modulus tracks the remainder of that. So it, it, it will store the remainder of how many times did something go into something and what was that number that was left over. For instance, if we had 5 into 26, what would that store? Well, that would store the remainder here. So it would only store 1. So it would store an integer of 1. Now with these here, there is an order of operations to follow. And they do hold precedence. I'm not going to focus too much on that in this lecture, but there is an order of operations. In the next week's upcoming lecture, you'll see how you can manipulate the order of operations and make sure that your arithmetic, once it becomes a little bit more complex, uh, is easily read across the board. Now the next set of operators I want to talk to you about is the incrementing and decrementing operators. So we will double up the plus symbol, which is the addition operator. If you put two of these together, what that does is it takes the variable, so the variable that you uh, have declared, and it adds one to it. So if you were to create int x, for example, down here, and x is set to 0 from the start, and if you did x++, plus plus, what that does is it now adds 1 to x, whereas x was 0, now x is 1. So x now becomes 1. If you were to use the uh, double hyphen here, which is the minus, so if you were to minus minus, that is to decrement by 1. So where x was 0 here, now it would be negative 1. Um, if you were to do it in line like this, it would be 1 and then back to 0. So if this program were to run inside of main, of these statements inside of main, uh, this would end up being 0 after everything is done. I'm going to pull up Visual Studio here. We're going to run through these examples just one by one. Zoom in so everyone can see. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to declare a double. I'm going to call it number one. And I'm also going to make another double. I'm going to call it number two. I don't know why my formatting's be a little weird. Oh, it's my keyboard course. I really want this keyboard to work so, so much. It's not working out for me. Um, let's give this a starting value. I'm going to give it um, 5.0. That'll work for me here. I'm going to give the next one 2. And the only reason why I'm doing 2.0 is I want to make sure this is represented as a uh, floating point. Uh, precision, but this is really just read this as 5 and 2. Okay, so we're going to see out here. We're going to see out. Um, let's make one more variable. Let's make one more variable. We're going to call this total. Okay, so we're going to call it total. And we want to see out total. And in order for us to access total, we need to make sure that total has something assigned. So let's use addition. So we're going to take total. We're going to say total is assigned with number one plus 
number two. So what is that going to do? That's going to take number one, which is five, and it's number two, which is two. It's going to add these two together, and then it's going to store that inside of total. So let's go ahead and run this. Move over my console window once it comes up, and we see a seven there. Seven, and press any key to continue. Perfect. Okay. That works well. I'm going to comment that out real quick. And now I'm going to do the opposite here. Or actually, I can keep this. I can keep this here. This is fine. And I'm going to take total minus number two. What happens here? Now, this is going to be interesting. We see that it's still seven, even though we said total assigned with number one plus number two, so it ad added these two together, which was seven. And then we said, okay, seven minus two. So this should be five, right? Well, it is five, but the problem is, is that this operation here isn't storing anything anywhere. So it is performing the math, but it's not actually storing that that result anywhere. And the reason why it's not storing that result anywhere is because the equal sign is missing. So if we were to if we wanted this to work, what we would actually have to do is to put total is assigned with its own value minus number 2. And that would make this work. So let's go ahead and run this again. I'm going to drag this window over here again so you can see it. And now we see it's 5. So again, just to recap, if you do not store, if you do not store this, this math uh, operation uh, in any variable, it simply will not show up if we try to reference that because it's not being stored. It is performing the math, but it's not actually storing it anywhere. So in order for that to work, we have to use the assignment operator. and then reference the two numbers that we want to uh, perform the uh, operation with. Now there's another way to do this as well, because you might think that this is kind of weird. Total is assigned with itself minus number two. There is a shorthand for this, and it's using compound operators. Now to do this, all we need to do is take the arithmetic operator and put that in front of an equal sign and then simply put the number that we want to uh, perform the operation with and now this this statement right here is now the same as the above statement so these two statements right here are identical so this is the shorthand for doing that. There's also there's also the same uh, that applies for each of the operations. So you could do plus equals, you can do minus equals, you could do multiplication equals. My formatting's getting messed up. Oh, it was reading. <laughs> it thought that that thought that that was the star here. Get these out of the way. Okay. So you can use these compound operators. You can even even do division equals. If you were to do division equals like this, you could do this as well. Okay. So that's compound operators. And that is the exact same thing as saying total is equal to itself minus. The number or if you use a different operator uh, whatever the that operator is so multiplication subtraction addition division so on okay this is getting a little messy so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that wanted to make that point though so let's go ahead and uh, show what division would look like so if we wanted to take uh, 2 into 5 what 
what would we need to put on what side? What goes where? Well, let's go ahead and print this out. We see 2.5. So what do you think happened? We take 2 and 5. If we were to print up, um, if we were to pull up, let's pull up our handy trusted calculator here. If we were to take 5 and then divide this by 2, we get 2.5, which is exactly what we got. The reason why I'm doing this here, you guys, is this is a programming class. It's not a math class, so I'm just trying to make it easy, uh, easy on the lay. So 2.5 is what we have. So number one being five, so that's five. So how many times does two go into five? Again, uh, left-hand side is what we what we uh, track by. So remember that order. Okay, and again, here we go. Multiplication. See, 5 times 2 is 10, and that's what we get. Okay. So now I want to go ahead and show you the modulus. Now what the modulus allows us to do is it allows us to store the remainder of division between two integers. Now notice we have doubles. And also notice we have a build error. So the reason why we have this error here is because remember that we talked about in our PowerPoint, remember how we talked about that this here will store the remainder of division between integers. Now notice what's wrong with our program here, and I'm always going to try to expose problems. Uh, these are the most common problems that I typically see across this class. And what do we have here? Well, we have a whole series of doubles. So in order to make this work, we simply change the data type to int to match what this is actually intended to do. We see that that error goes away. Now I'm going to go ahead and print this. We have one. So how many times does two go into five? Because in one it has uh, two times and it has one left over. So that's four. That one makes the five, and that's what we have stored in this here. So this stores a remainder. And you might kind of wonder what is that used for well it's used for a lot and um, it's it's definitely uh, something that uh, you will use throughout this class uh, so it won't, it won't go away and it will be useful and you will have those aha moments where uh, you're like ah that's why we use that okay so the next thing that I wanted to highlight is the incrementing and decrementing so I'm gonna raise everything up to the number one I'm going to set this equal to zero. Okay, I'm going to put number one here. So all I'm doing is printing out the variable that I've created. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put number one plus plus. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and print this. And now we see that number one is now one. And to show this, to show this, I'm gonna just control copy and control pay. Whoa. A little eager there. Okay. Just gonna copy and paste just so that you can see this. Now the first one you see is zero. The second one, after it's been incremented, is now one. Once incremented. Now if you notice this plus plus. Uh, you kind of also may tie the, the chords together as well. You guys are learning C++ right now. So C, this is actually what the uh, inside joke is to C++, is that whenever we, we say uh, plus, we're talking about incrementing. All right, It's an iteration. So what C++ is, is it's the iteration of C, the original C language. So that's what the uh, meaning behind the plus plus is uh, in the language is actually that it's the it's the next iteration of the language it's plus plus so that's uh, that's just a little um, uh, backstory for you guys that's that's interesting same thing can be done with minus minus okay we'll see that this is zero and now it's negative one because we've decremented there we go all right, lastly, uh, what I'm going to show you is um, with number one, our variable here, I'm going to 
take away this independent statement. Okay, I'm going to take away the independent statement, and now I'm going to inside of the see out statement, I'm going to directly add this to our see out statement. This is a very common issue that students will will face, so I want to highlight this here. Now, if you can read my console window here, it says zero and still zero. So why didn't this increment? Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move this to the top statement up here. So now the top statement is going to be incremented. So remember, it's zero, then it's going to be incremented. We're going to print it out again just to see if there's any change. We had zero, zero last time. Now we see it's zero, one. So it is actually incrementing. It is actually incrementing. But why doesn't it show up when the console window is being uh, called upon? And why doesn't it print its, its iteration here? And the answer lies into a concept called prefix and postfix. So whenever we put the operator on the end of the variable, we say that that's postfix. Okay. So whenever it's postfix, the operation will happen after after the variable is uh, uh, going to be, uh, we'll say, called here. So in this case, it's called to the stream, then we iterate. So that's the order that it's going in. So it did actually iterate, um, but it, after uh, the variable is called. So if we were to move this plus plus to the beginning, which this here is the prefix, if we move that to the beginning, I'm going to go ahead and run this. We see that it now is 1 in the first time that it was called. So we see 1 and 1, and that's prefix. So there is a difference between prefix and postfix. Prefix, uh, again, will iterate before anything happens. So before the evaluation, uh, which is this, this variable being called is the evaluation. Okay. Um, so before that happens, it will be iterated upon. Postfix is the evaluation happens, and then the iteration happens. So it's just something to watch out. So prefix and postfix on the increment and decrement. This, you might be asking yourself, what does this you know, do uh, in the long run? Well, you will use it in probably every other uh, program from here on out. It is very, very useful. Um, there's a lot of things where you need to simply add one and continue on. Ways that we will loop through uh, repetitive structures inside of uh, this language. So it definitely will be useful. It's a concept that you want to grasp along with all of the other arithmetic operators that we talked about. And hopefully this helps you in your next assignment. Thanks, guys.